Even though Catsight is a new K-pop group, their debut was surrounded with scandals, mostly due to Hybe's shady actions and girls not getting along. In November 2021, Hybe and Geffen Records opened their applications for a girl group with contestants from around the world as part of the joint venture Hybe x Geffen Records. With additions held across South Korea, the United States, Japan, and the United Kingdom in 2022, the partnership aimed to create a group that will transcend national, cultural, and artistic boundaries. In June, Catside debuted with the single called Debut. And on August 21st, Netflix's Pop Star Academy was released and people were disgusted by Hybe's actions. First of all, his comments that talent doesn't matter which brought back how much criticism Lu Seraphim have gotten. Bang Si Hyuk explains the concept of star power, or that special something that makes people drawn to an entertainer on stage, mentioning that it is hard to notice in trainees. He says, however, despite this, successful producers can spot it from the start from just one scene. Despite that, the few successful producers in this industry, like myself, can identify it. All you need is just one scene, and you'll think, oh, I could make something with this person. This concept of star power comes up again in the show's second episode as the casting team searches for more trainees. Bang Si Hyuk shares his thoughts on the search, saying in English that, Usually people believe that skill is the most important part, but for me, it's star power. This part of the episode was reposted on X, generating mixed reactions from netizens. This explains a lot about the company. Star power has its highs and lows and will never last while talents will forever be acknowledged and remembered by everyone. I firmly believe you can have both. As well, after 20 were selected, for weeks the girls were told that they would be training to be shortlisted into the debut group. However, the girls had no idea that this process would be aired into a public survival show, with global voting. In episode 6, the girls were only just informed prior to the second elimination that four girls would be going home, and instead of being told by their trainers and given feedback, they were told by a robotic screen shortly after, leaving them to pack their bags and head home immediately after. Another part of the show being criticized is when the girls were asked to pick five people they think would be ideal for the debut team. This was through separate interviews, and the girls were informed prior that they were private and wouldn't be aired, only for them to be shown to the girls when they were sitting next to each other and later the whole world. A text across the screen reads, The contestants never expected to watch their answers while sitting next to each other. Contestant Lexi left the show halfway through in episode 7. The whole program changed so much when it went public and when it turned into, like, this show, turning us against each other, she says. And that was something I really didn't like personally. It felt really wrong, and I was really upset. Another contestant Carly said that. From the start, we didn't know this was a survival show. It was supposed to be training, pick the girls, prepare for debut, and debut. What embodies K-pop and a group is their bond and their trust in each other, and what survival shows do is they put contestants against each other. I don't believe in putting people against each other to form a group. Brooklyn says I personally was told in that interview that this was not going to be seen and I felt so, like, betrayed. The Hybex Geffen president, namely Mitra said that they needed a more compelling storyline, however many fans have been upset by this deception to the contestants. If I signed on to be trained in private, evaluated in private, and selected to be in a girl group in private and after a year of grueling training sessions and brutal evaluations surprise surprise it's a survival show. Oh, there would be hell to pay. They also didn't tell the girls it was a survival show and were constantly lied to about their own privacy, see episode 7. Fucked up. Love Cat's Eye still, but fuck that shit, we needed a more compelling storyline you betrayed the trust of every single girl in that room. Another thing that caused the scandal was the mistreatment of Manon. Manon joined the group several months after they began the process and was lacking in skills, as stated by the training team.
As the episodes progressed, some other issues surrounding Manon came up, like her being late to class and curfew, which resulted in her moving out of the dorms to live with her aunt. During episode 5, the program manager, Missy, states that she would not add Manon to the group based on her attitude. However, once the group advanced to Dream Academy, Manon quickly became a fan favorite despite this. After a group discussion without her with Dr. Wetter, the program psychologist slash counselor, the girl's frustration with Manon missing practices, due to illness and physical condition, eventually came to a head as pressure built from the survival show. By episode 7, Manon has seemingly realized that she must put her best foot forward and seeks to resolve the issues between her and the other girls. During the interaction, Manon mentions that she feels like she is being unfairly treated, as other girls' absences are not treated as harshly. Sophia takes the lead speaking for the others, mentioning that the program requires hard work and that Manon had not been taking notes or being as attentive during sessions she had to physically sit out of. The situation does seem to get resolved as Sophia says that the other girls want to bring her up with them and want her to seem as though she wants to be there. Manon takes this olive branch and asks that they speak to her directly to avoid misunderstandings like that from occurring and apologizes for the missed practices. Portions of this clip were uploaded to X, where netizens shared their feelings about the interaction. The OP pointed out that during one episode, Manon was the only person taking notes, seemingly opposing Sophia's claims. Some felt that Manon was being unfairly targeted and treated, as she was unable to defend herself. Viewers have linked the treatment of Manon to microaggressions black women often face involving their attitudes and preconceived notions someone may have of them. I hate the bitches talking about neither is wrong or both is wrong when we can see plainly here that the girls were not trying to hear Manon out and just had their own narrative about her in their heads. Like Sophia was basically lecturing Manon without letting her talk. It's not in this clip but when Missy said let her speak it felt so microaggressive I'm sorry like Manon was literally trying to defend herself. It's the way she just stopped defending herself cause she knew they didn't actually care she was already enemy number one. Nonetheless, one of the girls most frequently criticized for Manon's alleged mistreatment is former The Debut, Dream Academy contestant and Slovak trainee Adela. Adela has received backlash after clips from Pop Star Academy, Katsai circulated. In them, she is featured complaining about Manon, claiming that Manon was favored with no effort and only due to visuals. The Americans experience what, like, a Slovak would experience all the time. Like, mm -hmm. we don't ever get represented, ever. Mm -hmm. And even the people that are, like, Manon, she's getting so much attention. Mm -hmm. You know, people are upset because she doesn't put a lot of effort and she doesn't show up for her teams a lot. And so people are upset that she is the person who's getting so much attention. It's not based on anything right now. It's just because she's pretty and that's true. She is pretty. Is Manon here? Manon, no, she's here. not here. Okay. Recently, Adela has addressed the docuseries with a new TikTok video. I wanted to come on here and say thank you so much for all the love and support that I've been getting since Popstar Academy came out a couple days ago. It's been crazy to read and I'm just so humbled and grateful, so thank you. I obviously am not blind and I'm seeing the negative messages too in the comments. And anything that I will say, if you want to see the worst in me, I'm not going to make you like me. Um, it's just what you decided and that is it. One thing that I think is necessary to remember is that as exciting as it must have been to get a glimpse into our lives as trainees and into the Cat's Eye members' pre-debut lives, it's very important to remember what the word glimpse means and that there's so many discussions and so many conversations and so many situations that didn't make the cut. 
you just didn't see a lot of it and that is just how it goes obviously you can't fit two years into eight episodes in the past year since the program has ended have been working on my own music the training as exciting as it was and as grateful as i am for it stripped away a lot of my identity from me because you're kind of trained to fulfill somebody else's vision for a group i'm ready to put out my own song and start my own universe if you're here i just really want to thank you however some are continuing to shade her alleged mistreatment of manon i'm not gonna say adela deserves the worst hate bc she is still human but i just feel like she's hella conceited you be the first one to speak up about anything but still can't apologize you did manon dirty point blank period now another trainee has seemingly accused the group of being mean Included in the 20 trainees was Aaliyah from Belarus, who was eliminated from the competition following the second mission. On her TikTok account, Aaliyah shared a clip of herself covering Blackpink's Lisa and Rosalia's new woman. When a fan commented that she wished that Aaliyah had made the final Cat's Eye lineup, Aaliyah said that it was okay and that she was not wanted there, adding that the vibes were mean. While some believe this was another indication that not everyone was treated fairly on the show, there is another possible reason for her statement. At one point in the show, the trainees were asked to form their own ideal lineup, and Aaliyah did not receive the number of votes she anticipated. When she was eliminated, she remarked, y'all didn't want me here anyways, reflecting on some feelings she had during the challenge. Aaliyah has not clarified if she meant that the members or staff were mean, despite numerous comments asking for clarification. It is also worth noting that she has talked about members in a positive light before, mentioning she was close to Sophia, Manon, and Celeste. Cat's Eye fans have been concerned that the docu-series is setting the group up for sabotage, as it doesn't paint everyone positively. Some members, such as Lara, have received hate since its premiere, and fans are worried it's creating solo stands more than genuine fans. Then, Cat's Eyes Lara and Manon have addressed their viral feud rumors in a new TikTok post to the group's account. They joined the latest trend on the app, which features the now viral meme of dolphins titled Enjoy Sunshine. Also, in a live broadcast, the Cat's Eye members addressed their docuseries. I feel like the intensity and the feelings that we felt during that time, now it's just so different. And the competition is not there anymore. So I don't know. I feel like going back, it's going to be very, very, very emotional. And I think that we're going to be a mess. Honestly, <laughs> I think that we're all going to be a mess. There was a point in time we would have to go to the studio like every day and I, this is a disclaimer there was a point in time where i would come to the studio in like a t-shirt and sweats and no makeup no. on like didn't oh my brush God, no, my no, hair no, no. We, got, we got too comfortable let's give <laughs> them a disclaimer when you watch the documentary like, that and you us. see us not <laughs> like not not us. looking That's absolute not bomb us. please forgive no, us we got really please. used to the cameras we got caught off guard and on we that were, days like, off. Sweaty. Sweaty. It's rough, but it's real. So it's real. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. Forgive we, us. <clears throat> we are really, really excited for you all to watch it. It's been in the works for a while. Yeah. So you will so see long. so many hardships. You will see so many victories. We're just so excited for you to see the journey and um in what is now Cat's Eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm really excited. So excited. I feel like we all got very vulnerable in the documentary. Netizens commented on the now viral clip, pointing out that time has passed and the girls are older now, some were even underage during filming. It's natural for any friends, especially young ones, to fight and make up. But today as of making this video, Sophia got a lot of backlash for being mean to other girls. Manon, Lara, and Danielle did a special Weverse live broadcast for fans. During the broadcast, while the members were having fun in a hotel in Japan, Sophia came in to ask the members to lower their volume as it was presumably late. What's that? Y'all are being really loud. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm not in this. I'm doing my makeup. Y'all are being real loud. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, you you later. I'm so sorry my leader. I'm so sorry, my leader. I apologize. I'm sorry. No, no. Good night. I love you. 
Hilariously, not long later, the three idols burst into a rendition of Happy Birthday. The clips were shared on X and TikTok, quickly going viral as netizens were obsessed with the chaotic nature of the members. Sadly, Sophia's behavior sparked some criticism and negativity from netizens who seemingly saw issues with what she had said to the members. Sophia is annoying like shut the fuck up. I'm confused do these girls like each other or not? Yet, netizens quickly came to Sophia's defense, explaining how she was doing it so the members didn't get into trouble with hotel staff for their volume. Many added that the reactions of the members actually show how close the group is with each other, and that it resembles a proper family. Getting mad at Sophia for telling the girls to quiet down, they were in a hotel, is crazy, leader or not, she's a member of Cat's Eye and has the right to let them know. Last thing they need is to get in trouble for being loud by their own slash hotel staff. Sophia get behind me. People hating on Sophia for telling her members to be quiet is insane y'all just wanna hate on them over anything ATP. I swear every single member of this group gets along so well with each other like they really feel like found family to me. Peak girlhood right there. What are your thoughts? I do like their song touch a lot, can't get it out of my head. Thank you for watching and see you next time.